What's up everybody? This is Elvis Rich of the World heading back at you again with another video and today Rich Bryant 1999 is out right now. Let's review. Hello everybody and welcome back to Elvis vs. The World. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, make sure you give a like on this video. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. And let's get right into it. Rich Brian has dropped a new EP today, August 25th, titled 1999. He was born in September of 1999 and he has dropped an EP to commemorate that and we are about to review it. And let's get into the album right now. Let's go. The cover art of the EP has Rich Brian drawn in a sketch. He's kind of smiling, doing his little goofy smirk. And it shows three dots under his left ear. And then under it has a text written 1999 in handwriting. That is the cover art of this EP. Okay, so the first track on Brian's 1999 EP is titled Sometimes. Now this track is about Brian going through a creative stifle in his, in his life. He expresses himself being down lately. He then talks about wanting to stay home and he just wants to make beats and he just wants to sleep for 8 weeks. That's all he wants to do. He reflects on how his enemies in his life have derailed his thinking. And he appreciates that he has friends for setting him on the right path. He does a lot of friendship appreciation throughout this album. He wants to live comfortably and have fun and he just wants to skip the drama that has been taking over his life that has been, has been clouding his mind with negative thoughts and negative judgments but he realizes that it's not going to be easy just having that and all of that accumulation of drama and negativity you know in some sort is part of life it's a part of growing up he just realizes that he starts to understand what's going on and he just wants to live carefree he then realizes that he's done with this living that he's done living this facade he wants to live life and just he just wants to enjoy his life uh, and maybe he's gonna make mistakes and he acknowledges that he's going to make mistakes he knows he's going to make mistakes because nobody's perfect he's gonna end up having regrets but at the end of the day that's the process of growing up so what I take from this track is that Rich Brian basically acknowledges that he's going to make mistakes. That people are going to judge you no matter what you do. Um, whether it's your friends, whether it's your family members or strangers. To understand his worth and he starts to understand the acknowledgement and being successful. And that he's just going to keep living through that life and he's just going to keep being him and living carefree. Nice testimonial by Rich Brian. He, he really delivers in this track. Uh, he's been getting really mature in his lyrical content. And this track was definitely an, a reflection of him growing up and how mature he's gotten. So again, this track proves that he doesn't really need a singer to, sh to showcase emotion on this track. He doesn't need a feature to showcase. So I feel like he's done a good job in using his voice to express his emotion. And that was a great start off. So the next track is titled Don't Care. I already dropped my full in-depth review and analysis on this track. So I'm gonna leave the card right here. Make sure you check it out on my channel. Long run. Brian again is using his singing voice a lot, emotion throughout the opening of this track, and then he leads into rap. This track is just Brian talking about the experiences in his life, how they're sort of meant for him to deal with. Uh, he feels appreciative of his work and he feels appreciative of his life, acknowledging his worth. He just wants to be at peace. It, with his life, he wants people, especially himself, to acknowledge the path that he's paved as a uh, upcoming artist from 88 Rising, an upcoming artist from Indonesia. Um, the path that he's paved and the amount of success that he has, and he just wants acknowledgement of that. It seems like this track is in response to the people that he's had around him talking a lot of bad about him and on his name the chorus echoes this sentiment and it shows that he's still still himself and that he's growing up
the next track on this EP is titled When You Come Home and boy this is a very slow song. This is a much slower track on this EP. It seems like this track is uh, directed to maybe an ex-friend or an ex-girlfriend of Rich Brian. Talks about he's reminiscing the old times that they had together. How they had an argument one evening or uh, a combination of arguments that have led to their separation and have led to them splitting up and going their separate ways. Uh, so they both went their separate ways and that Brian would be waiting there to listen to like the stories of the path that they each took. In this track he wishes her well and he hopes the best for her life. He doesn't have any ill will towards this love interest. To me this was one of the most uh, vulnerable tracks that Rich Brian has put out. You hear the sadness and emotion go throughout this track and Rich Brian's delivery really helps with that sadness and really helps lift that emotion so you can understand where he's coming from in this track. I really like the delivery and I really like the sentiment. It was a very slow track but I feel like this track was really it's really gonna be that standout track it's really gonna be that track that's gonna be in rich brian's arsenal as an emotional track So the next track we get into a more upbeat track from the last one this track is called doa from what i know doa from the common general meaning i don't know if this was the meaning that which Brian meant to take from it, but from what I know, DOA stands for Dead on Arrival. In this track, he's basically saying that the drama or the person that's on his mind is dead on arrival because he's overpassed that sadness phase and now he's moving on to bigger and better things. Uh, this song reminds me of Post Malone. It reminds me of Post Malone on an upbeat indie dance track. I get a lot of post vibes from this song. This song is basically saying that whatever sadness or, or downed mood that you're in or that Rich Brian was in in the past and now he's just living life. So he's living life, driving nice cars, partying it up in Los Angeles. He finds no point in dwelling in the past and dwelling on the bad that's happened in his life. And he could be living life to his fullest, so why dwell on the past? And I actually really liked this track. I felt like it was really short. Um, I wish it was longer. I really wish this track was longer because it's 2020. We need an upbeat track that's telling us to live life to your fullest, even though we're in a pandemic. A track that makes you wanna dance is a track that's kind of happy and upbeat. <laughs> Love In My Pocket was the first single that released in promotion of this 1999 EP and this song is basically a profession of love for his girlfriend, Vancy Hung, I think that's her name, Vancy Hung. And one of my favorite tracks, this is actually one of my favorite tracks on the EP and one of my favorite tracks by him in general. It echoes an old Rich Brian sound with kind of bringing a modern twist to it and I really wish this track had a feature. Brian does well and Brian's vocals on this is great so um, even though I wish this track would have had a feature, Brian still holds his own weight and plus he's professing his love for his girlfriend so. And finally, the last track on this album is called Sin. Ryan's vocals, again, this time on this track, hitting a higher range and it sounds really dope. Fuck a feature, Brian's vocal range carried this track. Like he does not need, he does not need a feature. Brian can hold his own. But Brian uses this track as a wrap up of the drama that's occurring in his life. He's moving on and he doesn't want to dwell, he doesn't want any part of this drama anymore. And he's tired of his friends bringing up his drama, presumably with some ex-friends or maybe an ex-girlfriend that he's talking about and he just wants to live carefree it's a sentiment that's echoed throughout the other tracks on this EP he then directs his next couple of verses to his mom which is really sweet so he tells his mom in this track he's already having problems already been dealing with issues even before he officially turns 21 years old he thanks her for raising him and making him the person he is today and I found that really sweet a nice moment of dedication to his mother and the track also says that he's strong he's a strong person because of her and he's looking forward to the future and wanting to grow and get bigger and better than ever the song wraps up with the voice message I tried looking it up and I don't know how his girlfriend's voice sounds but from a couple of fans that I was searching through on Twitter he apparently the voice message is from his girlfriend Nancy Han she was a big fan 
fan of his and they became close friends and they're not together but it was a nice sweet wrap up to the song and Sins is definitely another one of my favorite tracks by him my favorite track I believe Sins was my favorite track on this EP I feel like Sins was the real heavy hitter it was just a reflection of his life his drama a message to his mom and a nice voice message to his girlfriend so Sins was a really dope track All in all, I expected more from this EP, honestly. I expected this album was going to be talking more about his childhood, his life growing up, and to where he is now. And which he kind of touched on from time to time throughout the track. He definitely does elaborate on how he's living life now, how he wants to live life carefree and drama free. But what he does do really effectively in this EP, he provides a lot of sentiments of growing moments in this EP. It allows himself to acknowledge growth and rising above the past drama, rising above all the all the unneeded negativity and just moving forward and he's turning 21. So I feel like that was a nice a nice sentiment to add. Uh, he embraces wanting to move forward. Honestly who wouldn't want that? And he also acknowledges that he's going to make mistakes along the way. He's a human being and it's normal to make mistakes. It's normal to mess up no matter how perfect we seem we are and it's all a part of life and it's all a part of growing up and he mentions that a lot in this EP. He's maturing a lot in his content and I'm also happy to see that sense of growth and maturity is one highlight of Rich Ryan. The maturity in his music, lyrical content in his songs, I really really like that was enough to bring forth a compelling story in this EP. I would have liked more of a growing moment, like more of a timeline. It really was short and to the point. It really had moments of reflection, a nice wrap up. This album was pretty effective. It was pretty good. It's only seven songs long, but seven songs and they'll tell you a really good story about where Rich Brian is now. That is all for my review. Make sure you give a like on this video, thumbs up on this video. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Thank you all for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video. Stream Rich Brian's 1999 all streaming platforms.